Hello, my friends. So I just uh, came across a tweet by John Horgan, who's a science writer for Scientific American and also teaches science and the philosophy of science and basically science for the general public. And the tweet was about uh, the bruja over integrated information theory of Tononi, supported by uh, Christoph Koch, famous uh, neuroscientist and explorer of consciousness, and also uh, David Chalmers, philosopher of, of um, actually professor of philosophy, and uh, somebody who coined the hard problem of consciousness. So the article actually goes over the fact that uh, over 150 neuroscientists wrote a letter uh, objecting to integrated information theory, which had become the most popular theory. And uh, basically over 150 neuroscientists claimed that integrated information theory is uh, pseudoscience. John Horgan does a good job of um, defining pseudoscience and addresses things like uh, dark energy and uh, panpsychism and theories that have been offered thus far. Actually, I once asked uh, David Chalmers if he was uh, familiar with Indian philosophy, and at that time he said he was not. So it's very interesting that uh, the world is not fully aware that the so-called hard problem of consciousness was solved by Indian seers and rishis thousands of years ago. Uh, and this, uh, this is referred to as the philosophy of Advaita, which suggests that all perceived reality is consciousness fluctuating as vrittis, usually translated as thought waves, that mind and body and universe are all unified expressions of consciousness. So vrittis is usually translated as thought waves, but um, thought waves are entangled with, of course, emotions, which are a particular kind of thought, but also with uh, sensory perception, sound, touch, sight, taste, and smell, until you interpret sound through thought, it remains noise. But once you interpret it, then it can be music, poetry, literature, and many more things. Okay, so the vrittis are essentially all sensations, all sense perceptions, all images, all feelings, and all thoughts. This is a very profound and radical view of reality. It challenges the common uh, assumption that the world is made up of separate and distinct objects and that our consciousness is somehow separate from the world around us. So according to Advaita, which is the non-dual philosophy of India, as expressed in the Upanishads, there is only one reality and that is Brahman or pure consciousness. And pure consciousness is a field of infinite possibilities. It's a field of infinite correlation. It's unpredictable. It's creative. It's self-regulating. It's self-evolving. And uh, it's uh, without cause. It has no shape, no form, um, no location in space-time. It is irreducible, infinite incomprehensible, unimaginable, but it modifies itself as sensations, images, feelings, and thoughts, which recycle and evolve as the evolving mind-body universe. So that one reality is Brahman. It is infinite, as I said, and eternal and unchanging. The world of appearances is called maya. Maya means illusion and refers to the mother of all illusions, the goddess maya. 
So the world of appearance of Maya is a projection of Brahman. It is like a dream or a movie. It is not ultimately real, but it is real enough for us to experience it. Our minds are also projections of Brahman. They are made up of vrittis or thought waves, which includes feelings, imaginations and perceptions. Vrittis are constantly changing, but they are ultimately rooted in Brahman, the ultimate reality. The body is also a projection of Brahman. It is made up of what we call matter, but matter is ultimately energy and energy is conscious. So according to Advaita, according to Advaita, um, everything is consciousness. Everything is consciousness. Mind, body, universe are all unified expressions um, of consciousness. This view of reality has a number of implications. For one, it means that we are all inseparably interconnected in the one reality. We are all part of the same consciousness. We are not separate from each other or from the world around us. It also means that we have the potential to experience Brahman or pure consciousness directly. When we quiet our minds and go beyond the vrittis, we can experience our true nature. We can experience our true nature, which is Brahman or pure consciousness. And uh, the experience of Brahman is known as moksha or liberation. It is the ultimate goal of Advaita Vedanta. The Advaita view of reality is very profound and inspiring. It offers us a glimpse into the true nature of reality and our place in it. It can be difficult to understand and accept this view at first because it challenges so many of our basic assumptions about the world. But the more we contemplate it, the more we begin to see the truth in it. So the hard problem of consciousness was solved in India thousands of years ago while current neuroscientists and you know, people like Christoph Koch are suggesting that dark matter might be um, the source of consciousness. So any understanding of consciousness that is based on neuroscience is actually inferential. The only direct insight into consciousness is direct experience of consciousness through self-awareness. Only consciousness can be conscious. And when we experience our consciousness as one with that universal consciousness, then we are holy, we are healed, and we have returned to our source, and we have freedom from existential suffering. So please understand, these theories that are all being touted by modern scientists, they're all inferential. They have no direct, they give us no direct experience of consciousness. The only direct experience of consciousness is consciousness aware of itself, which is called self-awareness. Now, the inferential understanding of, of course, uh, consciousness is useful because it can help in our uh, future attempts to address mental distress and neurological problems and many such um, uh, many such uh, uh, forms of suffering which can be treated by the current models which are physicalist models they however no give us no direct experience of truth or freedom or liberation or what is called moksha. So let me know your thoughts on this. Mm -hmm.